Well, we're back for the final deck. I wonder what it's going to be. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and find out. All right, spin, 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 spin. Oh, 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 it's breakfast. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. All right. So this is Cephalid Breakfast. It is a combo deck that is built around combining Cephalid Illusionist with cards that target it over and over. So Cephalid Illusionist is a two mana one one. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability, you mill three cards. And it also has three mana and tap prevent all combat damage if you dealt to and dealt by target creature you control this turn. So it can kind of turn one of your creatures into a fog bank. But the main one is the first ability, milling when it gets targeted. So you have two ways to do that. You've got Nomad's Encore, a one mana one one that has zero. The next one damage that would be dealt to Nomad's Encore this turn is dealt to target creature you control instead. So you just target Cephalid Illusionist over and over and over and over, milling your entire deck. Or you can use Shuko, which is an equipment that equips for zero to target it over and over and over and over to mill your whole deck. Once you've milled your whole deck, you will mill over three Narc Amoebas and Dread Return. You flash back Dread Return, you bring back Thassa's Oracle, and then you win the game. The rest of the deck is built around supporting this combo. So you've got Urza's Saga, which can grind, but it also, on the final step, fetches your Shukos. You've got Stone Forge, which can also fetch Shuko, but it can also fetch Cauldra if you want to go the mid rangey like beatdown route. You've got four Force of Well, three Days, Brainstorm and Ponder to dig. Then you've got Orem's Chant, which is a silence for one mana, and for two mana, it's a silence plus fogs for the turn, basically. And then Cabal Therapy. So you use Cabal Therapy and Orem's Chant to make sure that your opponent can't interact with you. You also have three fairy, which also makes sure your opponent can interact with you and it can bounce troublesome permanence or redraw. And then you've got step through, return two target creatures to their owner's hand for five mana, but you're primarily using this to wizard cycle because Cephalid Illusionist is a wizard. Then the rest of the lands are unimportant. They're just various mishmashes of Esper colors. And that is the deck. The sideboard, three swords to plowshares and three prismatic endings for removal. Serenity for artifact enchantment hate for opposing artifact enchantment decks, which is a little bit awkward that it blows up your own sagas and shukos, but probably worse for them than it is bad for you. Flusterstorm and force of negation to beat spell decks, surgical for graveyards, and one pipping needle, which is findable off of Urza's saga. And that is breakfast. Let's jump into the final League of Legacy forever. We're on the play for round one. This hand is a turn two kill, so yeah, we'll keep. Opponent moles the six, moles the five. I enjoy this name a lot. All right, Delta, Fetch, Tundra, play Nomad's Encore, pass the turn. Verdant Catacombs, Grief. All right, well, they can, if they can reanimate this, they can grief both the Illusionists out of our hand. They Fetch, Underground Sea. All right, we've been scammed out of our turn two combo. So now we got to find Cephalid Illusionist again or try to beat them via... What they get? Exile, by the way? Oh, they exiled Stitcher Supplier. So they are Hogak. All right, Ponder. Teferi, Flooded Strand, Shuko. All right, so let's... I don't need Shuko. So let's put Shuko on the bottom, then Teferi, because I don't want to expose it to a removal spell, and then the land, no shuffle. So I could just get Urza's Saga going. On the other hand, if I'm going to play Teferi and bounce this next turn, I probably don't want to bounce it next turn, though. So let's just Urza Saga and get going. We can potentially beat them just off of Urza Saga, but it obviously depends. Stitcher Supplier, Milling, Brainstorm Ponder, Troll. No attacks. No attacks. All right. Uh, this one, and then we're just going to make Karnstructs, I guess. I mean, like, I guess if I Ponder into or, like, Brainstorm into another Illusionist, I win, but the likelihood of that is pretty low. So, yeah, let's just pass. And let's save Teferi in case they, like, get a Hogak back or something. Citra Supplier, Milling, Swamp, Cabal Therapy, Troll. Well, that's rough. So they know we have these at least, right? So the Stitcher's trigger goes off. They still didn't hit anything of value. So they'll name Ponder or Brainstorm, which I guess is fine. Yeah, all right, sure. They chose Ponder. They take our Ponder. Now they're attacking with Grief. All right, no blocks. Fetch. Let's make sure we have the other color we need. So Underground Sea. Although the only reason we need this is for Cabal Therapy, and I'm probably not therapying them. Yeah, it's fine. Let's just grab Underground Sea. All right. Make a Karnstruct. We're just under, like, no pressure to actually kill them. So probably just making another Karnstruct here. All right. What do we draw? A land. The thing is, I, I don't actually want to attack them because I, I don't want them to mill three more with Stitcher Supplier. Yeah, again, we're just not under any pressure. So let's just 
make another construct. When we start the popper marathon, I'll probably take a break after this and then start it after that. Not as long of a break as between the Pioneer and Legacy marathons. Uh, Urza Saga goes off. We go get Shuko. Play land. Um, equip Shuko to one of these. I'm still not going to attack though. Pass the turn. It's going to brainstorm and then figure out what to do from there. Another Stitcher Supplier. All right. Trigger. Milling over. Okay, they finally found Hogak. Have you played Popper before? And what do you think of it as a format? I have played it before, but a very long time ago. So the Popper format that I played wouldn't be in any way similar to the Popper as, as it exists today. I didn't like it at the time, but again, it's a completely different format now. Fetch Dryad Arbor, get Hogak. All right, uh, they have enough to do it again. They have a second Hogak in their yard as well. So let's just fetch Tundra, Brainstorm. I'm not forcing this even if I find force, but may as well. They're not going to do anything else this turn anyway. They have Days as the last card in their hand. You got to be kidding me. All right, well, I can at least resolve to Fairy. Attack with Grief, so let's block. I guess I don't need the Nomad's Encore. Eh, whatever, let's just block here. Not give them the option to kill it. All right, one of our Constructs dies, then it's back to us. Then we bounce Hogak to buy ourselves a turn. There's another Saga. So saga, Trigger, Teferi. Although, again, they have another Hogak in their yard, so they can just get it back. So bounce, Shuko. Well, we're really just drawing a whole bunch of nothing. So, again, I don't want to ever attack into the Stitcher Supplier because it just gives them more fodder. And I know they have, like, Amalgams and other things in their deck, so let's just not allow them to get that. So Shuko here. I'm going to hold this Shuko because there's just no reason to have it. There's no reason to have it right now, and I can potentially Brainstorm it back into my deck if I draw a Brainstorm. All right, replay the Underground Sea. And then Convoke Hogak. All right, Return of Hogak. Well, we drew a Brainstorm, so let's Brainstorm. Brainstorm. Stoneforge Mystic can grab Cauldra, and Cauldra beats Hogak. All right, so let's put back Shuko and a land. So that's eight crashing in next turn, so plus this. Stoneforge, trigger, go grab Cauldra, and then we just pass to them. Opponent goes to combat, swings with Hogak at us sure take eight go to six. Oh come on they drew cabal therapy off the top of their deck you gotta be kidding me all right goodbye cauldra sack stitcher supplier for cabal therapy stitcher supplier mills over days grief troll cast ponder at instant speed because they know we have this so wow that's all garbage so let's just shuffle we drew a brainstorm sure so i assume they'll just name cephalid illusionist here because that's the only card they lose to right wait what they named it Narc Amoeba. All right, before I decide whether I'm going to make a construct, let's brainstorm. So brainstorm. Jesus Christ. All right, we do gain a turn via Orem's Chant, I guess. So put these lands back. So if I make a construct here, right, then I'll have four artifacts in play. And then the constructs are actually big enough to trade for Hogak for one turn. And then they just replay Hogak again, but that's okay. All right, so... Make a construct, then Saga Tutors. We have one Shuko left, right? Yeah, Shuko. Play land, play to fair or plus to fairy, then just pass. Petty theft bouncing the construct. Does our opponent have like magic fingers and they just draw whatever they need at every single moment? This is just freaking ridiculous. Yeah, okay, sure. We have three, five, six defense. Hogak attack us. So block. Obviously with this, then I'm still taking five. I've got a block with a stone forge. So this absorbs five damage. We take three, we go to three, and then I can fetch and we're at two life after that. And then I can bounce Hogak back to their hand and I get also one more turn via Orm's Chant. Okay, so damage. These die, Hogak's still here. All right, thin the deck, grab another Tundra. Over to us, another Nomad. Bounce Hogak, drawing, Narc Amoeba. All right, let's just stop them on upkeep. So they can't cast Hogak. So play Narcomy. So hmm. I guess I no longer care if they block with this, right? Shuko this up. Shuko, go to combat. Swing. No blocks. They go to 11. Then we go Narcomyba. Nomad. Move the Shukos. Then pass and then Orms chant them in their upkeep. Cast Orms chant. Combat. No attacks from them. Okay. Back to us. Narcomyba. All right. Switch Narcomyba. Switch the Shuko over here. And then just attack with everything. And then we can play this Narc Amoeba as a blocker for these two. All right, combat, swing, no blocks. All right, Narc Amoeba, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. The last two cards in their hand that aren't Hogak are Force of Will and a blue card. Okay, 
Our opponent has god draws, apparently. They can just draw whatever they need whenever they want. So, all right, swords to plowshares, surgical, that's it. Um, Cabal therapy is still relevant to some degree in this matchup, I suppose. All of, the, all of our cards are relevant to some degree in this matchup. I have to cut stuff, so let's cut one Shuko. Let's cut not Force of Will. Although, again, they're the hand disruption deck. I don't know what to cut here. I always feel like it should just be Force, but maybe that's not correct. It's just, yeah, let's just cut Force. That's fine. Whatever. Submit. Triple Nomads, although we can put some of them back via Brainstorm, so I'll keep it. All right, Underground Sea, go. Or maybe I should just play Pond. No. Yeah, let's just... Yeah, we're going to Brainstorm these away, I guess. No, I do that next turn, so I should Ponder now. So Ponder... There's Cephal Illusionist, so keep this on top. So land, then the Illusionist, then land. No shuffle. Over to them. Underground C. Thought Seas. I suppose they'll just take Brainstorm now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, fetch Tundra. I, they can have freaking days. So yeah, I just play Nomads. Over to them. And then we'll try to win next turn. Ponder. Fetches Verdant. Underground C. Stitchers. Oh, please don't hit Cabal Therapy. They hit Cabal Therapy. Of course they did. Oh, and a Hogak. They named Nomads Encore. They take the remaining Nomads Encores. All right. Well, if they have Force of Will, we're dead. Although if they don't have Force of Will, then they're dead. So, all right. Land, Fetch, Tundra. All right. Jam out Cephal Little Illusionist. Snuff out on Nomads. Basically the same thing. All right. Brainstorm. Plays a land. Another land. Well, we're drawing absolutely nothing. All right. Combat. Attack with Cephal Little Illusionist. I guess I try to beat them down because they're not doing anything either. Narc Amoeba, land, go. Opponent fetches. Do you also call out play-by-play -play when playing off stream or something like that? No, the reason I do this is because the editing script that I have that makes that turns these streams into uh, videos automatically cuts on every piece of audio. So if I talk whenever I make a play, it record it will keep that part of the video and it'll cut out any other parts that are silent. It's also good just to like keep the viewers understanding exactly what's going on without having to perfectly pay attention to everything on the screen. And uh, if anyone is like has the the stream open in like another window or something and they're just listening to it, they can listen along as well. All right. Well, I'm gonna fetch. Uh, let's just grab another tundra. We drew another land. Okay, combat. I can't attack with the Cephalid Illusionist anymore, so we're just going to attack with Narc Amoeba. And at this point, there's no reason to play this land either because it's potential Brainstorm fodder, so let's just hold it. What are they doing? Rotten Reunion. Exile a card from a graveyard, create a 2-2 with Decayed. So now they can get Hogak back, and now we're completely screwed unless we draw the combo in the next two turns. Oh, this also works on our stuff too, so they can Rotten Reunion in to stop our combo as well. So as long as they just hold up two mana at all times, we can never win the game. Cool. Which they can. <sighs> all right. I think it's impossible to win from this position. And we're also drawing garbage. Just absolute garbage. We're drawing our Narc Amoebas. This prevents one damage from Hogak. Like, Jesus Christ. All right, whatever. Play Narc Amoeba. Combat. Attack with this Narc Amoeba. Over to them. Stitcher Supplier. Mills over. Bowmaster Ponder Misty. Wasteland or Underground Sea, sure. Swing with all of these, eh? Decay trigger. Well, I'm gonna block the Dryad Arbor, I guess. Block here, then stuff Little Illusionist this. Actually, no. I, I do actually wanna trade with their Dryad Arbor. Mm. I'm not beating them before they beat me via combat damage, so. I should have also blocked Hogak and then I would have saved one life. Or I, I could have blocked the zombie and saved two life, rather. It doesn't matter, we're not winning this game. Draw, step through. And because they wastelanded us, we're one mana short of being able to bounce Hogak to their hand. Cool. Oh my god. The only creature I can grab is Cephal Illusionist, right? So I can put two guys in front of this, survive for one turn. Even if I find the combo card, I still can't win because they have Rotten Reunion in their graveyard. All right, we're dead. Games like that are just miserable. Your opponent has every answer exactly on time whenever they need it, and you draw nothing. We drew absolute garbage both games. We're on the draw for round two. This is a turn two kill, so we keep it planes. Basic planes nothing tells me swords to plowshares, which means that running out the nomads here is bad. So I should wait until turn three. Uh, I guess I could daze the swords. It's potentially better to just wait until turn three and then go cephalid nomads with daze backup. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Tundra, go. And then we can go turn two stone forwards and they're forced to interact with that. City of traders. Well, never mind. 
Do I care that much about Archon of Emeria? Not in particular. It does prevent me from winning like super fast, but that's fine. Yeah, Archon resolves. Like I can still win with even with this in play. Urza Saga. I'm gonna Stoneforge next turn, so just Oh right, yeah. I forgot it does non-basics. God damn it. Alright, let's play Nomads. Three mana. Touch the Spirit Realm to exile this. Sure. Sure. I guess I could have dazed that. I don't know. These games are making me just like not care about anything anymore. Urza Saga tapped. Trigger. Let's just play Stoneforge. Trigger, go get Cauldra or Shuko. Shuko works too, but let's just grab Cauldra. They're not doing anything. Grabbing Cauldra. Back to them. Simeon Spirit Guide. And they're going to play a Initiative Dude. And then we're going to daze that. Yeah, daze this. All right, take two from that. How many more on the wheel? This is it. This is the last one. All right, Saga Triggers. I'm just going to play Cauldra. So activate Cauldra. Or activate Stoneforge, rather. Put Cauldron to play. Combat. Swing. I guess I should brainstorm right now in case I brainstorm into Force of Will and want to force something. So let's brainstorm right now. All right, no. So let's put back Narc Amoeba and a land. Yeah, they can't beat Cauldra. So on to game two. So it's Boros Initiative, which means I want Swords to Plowshares. Their creatures are too big for Prismatic Ending to matter. Serenity mostly doesn't matter. These don't matter. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. So it's just Swords. And then I want to cut... They do actually play Cavern of Souls, although they don't always have it. They have other things that you want to counter. Their hand's too varied for Cabal Therapy to matter. Let's cut Cabal, and let's cut one of the Narc Amoebas, and that leaves one more card. How good's Teferi? Their stuff is big and expensive, so bouncing it, and they also, they also just burn out their mana. They don't tend to have a lot that can actually interact with you, though, I don't think. What is in the Boros Initiative sideboard? I need to look. Fairy Macabre. So I would need Cabal Therapy. All right, let's cut Orem's Chant. We have Daze, we have Urza Saga, we have Teferi. So this hand, slow as heck, but we can Daze something maybe, and then we can get Urza Saga going and then Teferi stuff. So it depends on how busted their first turn is, or if they have Cavern of Souls, but I'll keep. Leyline of the Void, well, we have to deal with that. Plateau. All right, play a fetch land and go. City of Traders. They're still not doing anything, okay. Ooh, and Force of Will. All right, so let's just play another fetch land and pass. The reason I don't want to play Urza Saga here is because it's po very possible that I'm going to, to ferry this back. It's also possible that I daze back one of my lands and then I don't have enough to activate. So City, they just sacked it without doing anything with it. Okay, well, cool. Oh, they might have Blood Moon too. I do need to play around that as well. All right, fetch, planes, fetch, island, Urza Saga, trigger, to ferry, bounce and ley line back to their hand. And then back to them. Plays Ancient Tomb. They just don't have anything to do on four mana in their Boros Initiative deck. How can that be? All right, Saga. We can actually win right now. I can win. I can win if they don't have Fairy Macabre, right? Fairy Macabre is the only thing that interacts with our to Fairy. All right, well, I guess let's go for it. The fact that they're just not doing anything is just... Yeah, all right, whatever. Let's go for it. So Nomads, Cephalid Illusionist. All right, Target, Mill, Always Yield. All right, we win. On to round three. How do they not have anything to do with four mana in the Boros Initiative deck and six cards in their hand? On the play for round three. Uh, no lands is a malt. All right, this is fine. So I keep this. I'm keeping the lands. I'm keeping days. They probably saw the ley line and insta kept without looking at the rest of the hand. I'm just saying in general, how can a random assortment of cards from their hand in the Boros Initiative deck and four mana not be able to cast anything? Oh, uh, like all the rest of these cards are really good. Well, step through gets us the Cephalid, and then and then Urza Saga gets us the Shuko. So these two cards here are the cards we need the least in this hand, but it depends on the matchup. So I'm gonna say Stoneforge can go back. Well, Stoneforge is like a really good play on turn two. Although Wizard Cycle for Cephalid Illusionist is also really good on turn two. All right, let's put Stoneforge back. All right, Delta pass. Mox Diamond. Okay, so it's a depth deck. Yeah, discard depths. Play Urza Saga. Sphere of Resistance. Fetch. Grab Underground Sea and daze this. All right. Well, now we're returned behind. So they get to do Saga stuff, and then presumably they'll have some sort of graveyard hate in their deck, like Soul Guide Lantern is a one of to get, so we'll be out of our combo at that point. Another step through. All right. Underground Sea, go. There's a Saga, two counters. Maze of Ith. Oh, good. That can't tap. Excellent. All right. Let's play Urza Saga. Back to them. There's a Saga up to three. They float. I guess they don't know that we're that we're breakfast, right? So they might not fetch Soul Guide. Another Mox Diamond. Discarding Tabernacle. 
plays Crucible of Worlds, replays Urza Saga. All right, Wizard Cycle for Cephalid Illusionist. So Saga, trigger. Oh, I can just win right now. Cool. So land, Cephalid Illusionist, Shuko. All right, we got it. Trigger. Oh, I can't move this, right? I can't, I can't equip it to itself, right? Oh, I can. Always the old. All right, activate. Let's just go off. I guess what? They could have Endurance in their hand. Like, I don't see why they're not just... I don't understand why they're not just conceding to this at this point. Mill, mill, mill. Keep milling. Keep milling. All right, before I keep going, I guess let's Cabal Therapy them. Sacking one of these Narc Amoebas. Name Endurance. No, they have two Explorations in Rashad and Port. So they're just not conceding for no reason. All right, just keep going. They're just making us waste time, although this combo doesn't take that long. So, like, they're just making us waste very, very little time. All right, Dread Return, Targeting, Oracle. Okay, I guess what? They're just seeing the rest of our deck, maybe? So, lands. Um, I want Serenity for Urza Saga and Mox Diamond and Exploration. I want Prismatic Ending to eat all of their other stuff as well. What else? Needle... Uh, surgical extraction, so they can't loam loop or fuse crucible. Force negation to force other things. There's a lot of stuff I want. Days is very unlikely to to work because they're a lands deck and all their stuff's cheap. Don't need cabal therapy. Uh, the cauldra plan is probably not going to work. So get rid of stoneforge cauldra shuko. Like the cauldra plan just doesn't work in this deck. They have merit lage, which will beat you faster than you beat them. They have maze of ith, so that you can't even cauldra. So I doubt that's going to work either. And that leaves one card to cut. I don't know, one Orm's Chant or one Teferi. Now nah, I want to keep Teferi. I'll cut Orm's Chant. Teferi doesn't do much. Now Teferi bounces Urza Saga. It bounces Mox Diamonds back to their hand. It means they can't active, They can't cast Endurance or, or um, Surgical Extraction when you're ready to go off. I could technically bring in Swords to beat Dark Depths, but I think I just want to try to beat them before they assemble all of that. Or just try to... like. In, and to just try to intercept their stuff. Like, Swords to Plowshares is not a good way to actually win the game. It's just a way to not lose for a turn. So let's submit that. Nomad Serenity is a great thing here. And then we have Brainstorm and Teferi. This is fine. Keep Savannah. Elvish Reclaimer. All right, well, that's something worth swordsing, but I think it's still fine. Oh, I can Prismatic that. Cool. Land, Prismatic this. Back to them. That was a timely draw. Blast Zone. Sphere of Resistance. Okay. Hmm... It's three mana to pop this, right? So if I cast Nomads, I can't cast Force Negation if I need to, though. So let's just pass, and then we have the option of either Brainstorming or Forcing, depending on what happens. Land, Fetch, another Savannah, plays Life from the Loam. All right, I'm definitely Forcing that. So Force this, Pitching, or Peg 1, Pitching, Brainstorm. All right. All right, so I probably just play Serenity now, right? And kill that. So Fetch. Fetch, play Serenity, and we have a kill in two turns. Ghost Quarter. Well, I wouldn't have fetched this if I knew they had Ghost Quarter. I was trying to fetch around Wasteland, but I guess that doesn't matter. All right, we do have a Plains left, so let's grab that. All right, Trigger Serenity. Boom, get rid of Sphere of Resistance. Surgical is a good draw, too. All right, play Nomads, and over to them. Obviously, they can get rid of it with Blast Zone, but they can get rid of it with Blast Zone whenever they want, so I'm never going to ha have an opportunity to not do that. Three mana, No. Yavamaya. All right, now they can pop it whenever they want. All right, Wizard Cycling. Go grab Cephalid Illusionist. Combat, swing. All right, so if I play Illusionist, they just pop and kill it immediately. So I think I would rather just run out to Fairy. Play to Fairy. All right, minus on nothing. Draw card. All right, pass to them. All right, popping Blast Zone, killing Nomads. Dark Depths. Soul Guide Lantern. Okay. Eats Prismatic Ending out of the yard. Okay. Plus, can't go off with Soul Guide in play, so let's ponder. Dread Return, land, land. Yeah, we're shuffling that. Draw a land. Well, uh, let's just cast Narc Amoeba, I guess. Couldn't you have waited and cast the Illusionist first? You could respond to the Blast Zone by milling your whole deck? No, because then they just kill it with Illusionist on the stack before it hits the field. I already had Nomads in play before that. Dark Depths, remove a counter, sure. Green, green, green. I mean, could you just have played Nomad second? We didn't even have an Illusionist in our hand at that point. All right, Endurance, Trigger. Are they targeting me or them? Targeting nobody. All right, let's just get lands out of our deck. I can Needle Thespian Stage. All right, or actually I can Needle Soul Guide, right? I can Needle the Soul Guide and then they can't activate it. All right, so Needle. So they're just going to pop Soul Guide now to draw, sure. So I'm going to Needle probably just Thespian Stage. 
or Urza Saga would be really bad, but I also have Urza Sagas in my deck. So let's just name Thespian Stage. And then I want to get Illusionist into play this turn because they're going to attack the Fairy and then I'm going to block with Narc Amoeba. And then if I don't draw anything after that, I may just want to block, although I'll probably just bounce something with Teferi to draw a card, but there's the possibility I don't. Like, I may just want to have this to block the Endurance. There's Thespian Stage. Swords to Plowshares. Okay. Yeah, that was the alternative is like, well, what happens if they just have a removal spell? All right, I guess they have a removal spell. Milling over, Prismatic, and two lands. So Swords kills that, and then I have to chump Endurance. All right, chump. So I don't know what else is in their hand, but basically we're both in top deck mode now. Surgical Extraction on Narc Amoeba. I guess I Surgical it in response. All right, Surgical Narc Amoeba. So Surgical it in response, eat this one, and that's it. The awkward part is I can't even bounce Endurance because then they just have an Endurance in their hand. All right, Brainstorm. Well, oh my god. Wow, this is a horrible Brainstorm lock. We're drawing Land of Narc Amoeba Oracle. God damn. I guess I'm going to play my Oracle. Right, I'm going to play my Oracle, put these pieces of garbage away and then bounce my own oracle so put these back so oracle trigger nomads is one of the cards we still need to find illusionist even after that all right put nomads on top then bounce my oracle and i'm not blocking them so there's no window in which we don't have this in pl yeah okay let's just play this then over to them like if they have removal then they'll just kill if they have removal and i have to play cephalid illusionist plus nomads and they just kill either one with the other one on the stack all right endurance hits us no blocks we go to 13 plays ancient tomb they can remove two counters from that a turn all right we're not doing anything so let's hit them swing actually i just don't think i can afford to do nothing let's just let's just play oracle trigger yeah guard that stuff is terrible so just no to that over to them yeah remove a counter from dark depths remove a counter from dark oh they could have done it again Shadow Spear. Well, the clock has increased a little bit. Shadow Spear onto that. Four, we go to nine. They go up to 19. Draw. Orem's Chant. I'm not blocking, so go to combat. Swing. Actually, I will block with Oracle because I want Oracle in my graveyard. Yeah, so swing with Nomads and then just back to them. So remove a counter from Dark Depths. They are actually getting to the point where this can kill me. Swing. All right, block. We go to eight and then oracles in our graveyard and we can dread return it or we can just keep having nothing all right combat swing i guess now i guess they could just have another endurance there's just no point in attacking them anymore let's just keep passing remove a counter from dark depths yep remove a counter from dark depths all right, we're not blocking so we're at four uh fetching here doesn't change the, the clock so we may as well fetch and thin our deck all right what do we draw cephalid illusionist all right so orms chant cast target them cephalid illusionist we got there. We finally got there. All right, target. Always yield to this. All right, we won. On to round number four. All right, we're on the play for round four. This is... Obviously, we have Dread Return in our hand, which is a problem, but it's otherwise decent, so I'll keep. All right, so land, go. So I'm just going to run out Stoneforge on turn two, and then we'll see what happens. Well, it looks like we're getting Thought Seized, so goodbye, Stoneforge. Mm-hmm. Goodbye, Stoneforge. All right, drawing... Arms chain. All right, well, let's just run out of an illusionist. Play Cephalid Illusionist. And over to them. Blue, Brainstorm. No second land drop. All right, so Brainstorm's good. So let's well, Brainstorm. Force of Will, the Brainstorm. Okay, Pitching Days. Sure. Um, I'm just going to run out the other one, I guess. Multiples. Do they also have another Days, despite just forcing one? They also have another Days. Incredible. All right, Combat. Attack them with this 1-1. One, one. Underground Sea reappears. Delver. Okay, so it's either Grixis Delver and they just haven't found another land. We're, meanwhile, we're drawing nothing. I guess I can Dread Return my Stoneforge. All right, let's do that. Underground Sea, Dread Return on Stoneforge. How do you still have counter spells? How? Okay, sure. Back to them. No Delver flip. They had double force, triple days. Or no, double force. Yeah, double force, double days. All right, Brainstorm. Put Narc Amoeba back, put back Orem's Chant at this point. Land, fetch. Don't want to draw either of those cards. Grabbing Tundra, cast Ponder. Okay, Stoneforge is decent, and Stoneforge reshuffles these two. So let's this, this, this. No shuffle. Play Stoneforge, trigger, and then we can win with Shuko. So yes, grab Shuko, cast Shuko. All right, won that game. 
So Grix, presumably Grixis Delver. Uh, swords to kill their guys and maybe Fluster Storm to get through their counter spells. But we can already get through their counter spells with Orem's Cabal to Fairy, so probably not. So probably just swords in and then one Shuko out, one Orm's Chant out. And I'm not sure what else. Day, one days maybe? We're all in the draw as well. Yeah, okay, one days. Turn two kill if they don't interact, although they obviously will. But we also have Urza Saga. Like, this hand's good. Volcanic Island. All right, so it is Delver. Hmm. I think it's probably better to just kill that. So let's go land. And then let's just pass and upkeep swords it. Fetch, Tundra, swords, your Darcy. All right, that succeeds. Wasteland. All right. Ooh, another land. All right, Tundra, Nomads. If they bolt it, they bolt it. That's fine. Over to them. They did not. Another Wasteland. Thankfully, we have enough mana to keep up. Land, combat, swing here. Scalding Tarn. All right. Let's try to see if we can combo. Oh, man. Oracle, we just drew. We just drew Oracle. They might concede just by playing Cephal Illusionist. So there's a Saga. Fetch, Tundra. Play Cephal Illusionist. Fetch with Scalding Tarn. Grab Underground Sea. Snuff out on the Nomad. Okay. Very well. Over to you. Blue, blue. Petty theft. Uh, let's mill. And I'll just daze that. That's fine. Daze. Pick this up. All right. We milled Calder over. That's bad. Wasteland again. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding. Triple Wasteland. Oh my god. Do they also have Merc Tide on top of all of that? You gotta be kidding me. All right. Well, Jesus Christ. Pass. We have to try to, what, draw three lands and resolve three fairies so we can bounce this? Merc Tide. We hit for 14... All right, back to us. Tundra. I guess I'm going to play this Narc Amoeba as a blocker, maybe. I don't know. Fetch. Play Narc Amoeba. And you have Bowmasters. Of course, you also have Bowmasters. Ugh. Trigger, mill. And now we're taking six a turn. Block. We go to 11. And then we're dead in two hits, basically. And we don't have anything going on right now. And Oracle's in our hand. Let's just, let's just concede this. <sighs> All right, let's run it back. Turn one, Nomad. Turn two, Stoneforge. That's good. All right, keep. All right, fetch, go get Tundra, play Nomad. Over to them, Polluted Delta, fetch, Underground Sea, Thoughtseize. I'll daze that. Daze your Thoughtseize. All right, daze resolved. I can Cabal Therapy them, but what am I even naming? Bowmasters? It's just random what they have. Like, I don't know what they have. Like, the best thing for them to have would be Bowmasters to just play and kill this. So I guess I named Bowmasters. All right, land, fetch, Underground Sea, Cabal Therapy you. They're going to force that. Exiling Ponder. Sure. Hmm. All right, go to combat. Swing. Scalding Tarn. Fetch. Is it just Bowmasters? Because I wasn't sure. All right, it is just Bowmasters. So I should have I should have gone with my first instinct and just flashed back Cabal Therapy. All right, let's play Stoneforge. Trigger. Let's go grab Cauldra. Over to them. Wasteland. I assume they'll just waste the Tundra instantly. Mm-hmm. No attacks. All right, we have another Tundra, so it's fine. Activate. Put Cauldron to play. Trigger. Go to combat, swing. Opponent takes five, 11. All right. The only answer they have to this is Brazen Borrower. Swing with the orcs, no blocks. Go to 16. Polluted Delta, back to us. Force of Will. Combat, swing with both of these. Red, bolt the Stoneforge. Take five, go to six. Play Urza Saga. I think I'm just going to hold open Force of Will rather than brainstorming. Well, obviously, I'm not brainstorming with Bowmasters in play as well. All right. Orcs, we go to 14. All right. They've just conceded. Fifth and final round, last game of Legacy, round five on the play. This hand's almost really great. We just need to ponder for another land. I'll keep it. All right, land, ponder. So we do have another land on top and a Force of Will on top. So I want to draw the Force of Will and then keep Cauldra third from the bottom. So this one, this one, this one, no shuffle over to them. Misty Rainforest, fetch, forest, basic forest, plays Ignoble Hierarch. It's gonna, if I don't counter that, it makes the days worse. So let's just force it. Get rid of Narc Amoeba. All right. Tundra, play Cephal Illusionist. Bayou. Bowmasters, daze that. All right, we have the win if they don't have an interaction piece. Play Nomads. All right, we won game one. So I assume there's some kind of like Nick Fit mid range deck. So that being the case, Swords to Plowshares to kill their guys. Cut one Orms Chant, cut one Shuko. Days on the draw is worse, especially if they're playing Monodorks. All right, so run that. Game two on the draw. Cephalid, Shuko, plus Days backup, we're keeping. Misty Rainforest, Fetch, Bayou, Green for 
Zenith for a Dried Arbor, sure. All right, so Misty, go fetch an island. Play Shuko, back over to them. Verdant Catacombs, attack with Dryad Arbor, sure. So if their only answer is Bowmasters, I can play Illusionist with Days Up. All right, Urza Saga, trigger, play Illusionist. All right, equip, trigger, always yield to the mill. Obviously, they, they can have answers to this, but I'm going to go for it. Snuff Out, all right, well, can't daze the Snuff Out. We did hit an Arc Amoeba, so Snuff Out resolves, killing this. Then we mill, did we hit another Narc Amoeba? Wow, all right. Well, I may as well Shuko something. Opponent fetches. Is it Bowmasters now? Forest. All right, pass over to them. Ignoble Hierarch. Gaia's Cradle. Days rapidly lose in value here. Attack with Dryad Arbor. Trigger Ignoble. Yeah, I'll trade with that. Block. If you've got Gaia's Cradle in play, sure, I'll trade with that. All right, Saga up to two counters. We drew the Oracle. So land, equip Shuko, and then let's attack. Swing. They go to 12, and we just pass with Saga open. Why would you ever attack with Dryad Arbor there if you have Gaia's Cradle in play? Black, Thoughtseize. So let's say they have Natural Order, right? I can still daze that. If they take the daze, then I just brainstorm for something. I'm not, I'm not going to brainstorm in response to this. Sure, Thoughtseize resolves. Taking daze. They're just not doing anything. All right, so end of turn fetch. Grab a Tundra. Activate Urza Saga. So untap. Ooh, another Urza Saga. All right, trigger, make a Karnstruct. Flash and Bowmasters, sure, they can kill Narcomoeba, that's fine. No, they're going to target the Karnstruct? Do they have two Bowmasters? Okay, fetch. I guess it's so they have double Bowmasters is what they have, which makes our Brainstorms and Ponders really, really bad. Yep, double Bowmasters it is. Mm-hmm. So Saga resolves. I took out one of our Shukos, so I actually can't get another artifact, right? Yeah, so it bricks. And then we just play another Saga, and let's attack with this Narcomoeba. Swing. I doubt I'm blocking anything here, but I may as well switch Shuko over to this. And then back to them. So they're top decking, and we have Urza Saga online. Swing with the Orc token. I will not block that. Take three, go to 14. Fiend Artisan, which is a 2-2. Two -two. But then they can tutor stuff. All right, this is a problem. Swords to Plowshares. All right, I can't get rid of both Bowmasters, so let's just Swords this. So land, move this here, and let's go to combat. Swing, swing. No blocks. All right, fetch. Grab a planes, I guess. And then make a construct. So I get more damage in. Then we deal the damage. Then I absolutely need to swords this right now. So swords this. Move this over here and back to them. All right, we won. 4 1 with breakfast. So, I mean, I don't know what much there is to say about the deck. It's pretty straightforward. I think all of those games pretty accurately showed how the deck runs and operates and the different play patterns and whatnot. So yeah, that is Cephalid Breakfast and Legacy. And that is the final Legacy deck of the Legacy Marathon. So let us delete Breakfast. We are now officially done with the Marathon. So that's all, folks. Hoppers next.